What's going on everybody, C4 here, welcome back to the channel, and today we are back for episode 5 of our Madden 21 franchise with the Detroit Lions. We're here in a week 5 bye, but getting out of that bye, we're going to be a couple road dogs in this episode. Week 6 on the road against Jacksonville, week 7 on the road against Atlanta. Both those games are winnable for sure, but let's be honest, we'll probably more so side with that Jags game week 6 as almost a must win. We are sitting 1-3. Luckily, the rest of the NFC North is very bad. You know, we have you're only a game back and two games back from being in the lead. So I know it's a, it's a good week just to clear your minds, especially coming off that week four loss against the Saints. It was very close, 41 to 38. We had a player of the week performance here at a Desmond Trufant, who's actually been probably one of the more underwhelming players on the defensive side of the ball. 13 tackles, a sack, and a forced fumble. Looking around the league, man, nice to see Joe Burrow. Getting it together. Corey Littleton having success with his new team. Jimmy Garoppolo not just handing the ball off and throwing for five touchdowns. But we got to focus on what's going on in our building. One and three is not where we want to be. We see her at the bye looking at our contracts here. Marvin Jones Jr., Danny Amendola. You know, we got to wait and see. Marvin Jones Jr., as, as much as, say, Desmond Trufant has been the most disappointing player on the defensive side of the ball, I could almost argue Marvin Jones has been the most disappointing player on the offensive side of the ball. And it's actually been... Danny Amendola, old 34-year-old Danny Amendola that's been making a lot more plays than Marvin Jones Jr. But look at the rest of the contracts. Taylor Decker just got a big contract extension in real life with the Detroit. I think it was like a five-year deal, six-year deal, something crazy like that. I mean, he's definitely on the cards for me to re-sign him. I mean, I am going to be using my draft classes in this series, so it's not going to be like the Madden Generate draft classes where it's almost impossible right now to draft offensive linemen. But I definitely think Taylor Decker, especially on that deal, we're probably going to have him longer than two years. But, I mean, you're not paying elite money. And I think there's still a ceiling there that he can develop into a fringe 80, if not getting into the 80s caliber of player. I mean, looking beyond that, Mike Ford could get a contract extension. Jared Davis could get a contract extension. Uh, I definitely like Taekwon Lewis as well. Uh, Reeves Mabin already has a player of the week in the bank for us. So, you know, it, it, it is definitely going to be different than, say, your traditional five-year rebuild and stuff like that because, you know, it, it's not going to be that very fast, very quick turnover. These are guys that, honestly, I want to play with, and if they have solid stats, we might be able to develop them into something special. That's more so in the case of guys like Taekwon Lewis and Jalen Reeves Maven. But we got the bye week here. Let's continue to scout our players as we are, you know, I, the direction that we want to take for this draft is... I think wide receivers is a big one because we don't know where our wide receiver room is going to look if we decide we don't want to extend both Danny Amendola and Marvin Jones Jr. So I definitely think doing our due diligence here, especially on the first round, graded wide receivers, even getting into the second round, uh, we are going into like quite possibly one of the best periods for what needing wide receivers and just wide receiver talents. Uh, last year, the 2020 draft, obviously with Ruggs, you got Jerry Judy, you got C.D. Lamb, Jalen Rager, Brandon Ayuk, Denzel Mims. It goes on and on. Very, very stacked draft class at the wide receiver spot. And in 2021, I mean, Jamar Chase, Rondell Moore, Jalen Waddle, Devonta Smith, Rashad Bateman, Tylen Wall, Sage Charette. Even beyond that, I'm definitely going to want to scout Terrace Marshall, Tutu Atwell, Chris Olave, Tamorian Terry, Anthony Schwartz, Seth Williams, Amara St. Brown. Like, really, the first three rounds almost can't miss caliber wide receivers outside of that i mean i'm definitely intrigued by the size that tj vasher will bring uh smith marset marquez stevenson got a lot of speed to him so there, there's more than enough options here at wide out we should be able to add uh replacements but i guess we have to decide especially if we're going to be losing some depth at the wide receiver spot is it going to be worth investing one of our premier picks be it first or second round because we're probably going to have you know we're going to be way closer to a top 10 pick when all said and done then a bottom 10 pick uh, is wide receiver that big of a need, but we'll do our due diligence and get our scouting board all figured out. We're coming back from the bye week. Gotta have the heart to heart here with Jamie Collins. Upset about the losing streak. What position has been the worst? I would say without a shadow of doubt, it's been the secondary. Our run defense generally has been stout. It's just been like, posing quarterbacks are insanely accurate. We are not doing a good enough job to disrupt their game plan impose our game plan but we will actually kick things off here by looking at taylor decker 26 he looked for a two-year i think a three-year deal is probably a little bit more up my alley that i'm comfortable paying and he wants a little bit more salary i think we should be able to get it 
maybe adding half a million dollars more. I mean, I don't want to you know, walk on that thin ice and have a chance of him walking out, leaving the building, being unhappy, and want to hit free agency, because you're not going to... I mean, I know. We've done enough rebuilds to kind of have a vague idea of what the free agency pool is going to look like. So, keeping that in mind, I definitely think we will come back to the table with Taylor Decker and his agent. I will tell you right now, don't know why these menus are so laggy. Come on. One Mississippi, like we're at like eight seconds here, 10 seconds to load up a draft class. Eh, optimize yourself a little bit better. I want to finish scouting the wide receivers today. At least the group of guys that I think uh, certainly should be on our short list here. Uh, going into the third round. Not going to be able to get them all. I definitely want, like I said, for wideouts, we'll get to be able to hammer out at least this episode. I want a Monroe St. Brown, Vasher for sure. Stevenson for the speed. Uh, probably it, I say, for right now for the wideouts. But we got a good chunk of them, and most of them, even the red guys, aren't bad. It's not like we're getting guys that are like 7th round, 8th round that are projected to go this high. So uh, happy with the wide receiver scouting so far. We have some upgrades here. I think it's for Jeff Okuda, who's doing a great job. He's had some ups and some downs. I mean, when was has there ever been a rookie corner that took over the NFL like his first year? Rookies at, at the cornerback spot, there, there is definitely that grace period. It's a little bit of a learning curve, making that jump from college to the pros. I know like tight end is a position that I, it's very, very few and far between that rookie tight ends have breakout years. I never think you can throw a corner that. I have top of my head, I can't think of a corner that was amazing as a rookie. Like, man, Marshawn Lattimore might have been the last one. But, like, more often than not, even if you're, like, a super highly regarded corner prospect, it, it's very unlikely you're going to be a lockdown corner day one in the NFL. And, hey, Kuda had a pick in his first game against Chicago. And, you know, he's battling. He's still out there battling. So today, we're going to kick off our gameplay with a matchup where we're actually a little bit slight favorites if you're looking at it just from a base team overall. Oh, there's this. Yeah. Yeah. This is a Jags team that, you know, I think they still, obviously because of when I started this franchise, they should still have Fournette. Obviously they have Fournette. That just happened like the other day. But they, I think they still have Ngakwe. They still have Ngakwe and Fournette on the roster. Okay. Okay, I see you. Got to be a little bit more of a challenge, but I definitely think now that we're down on All Pro and we're able to, even though we still lost on All Pro against the Saints, I think All Pro Jacksonville. This is a game that I think we can win this one. I think we for sure go two and three. Hopefully, throw no picks with Matt Stafford and look pretty doing it. One thing I do want to accomplish in this game is is to try to get back to the run just a little bit. The run in our one victory, we ran the ball all over the Chicago Bears, and I guess you know. Run meta, heavy run is not maybe the most exciting gameplay, but there comes a point in time where like, hey, I don't want to go and have it be like a two-win team, you know? And we got two really good young running backs here, DeAndre Swift and on Johnson, that, I mean, they both deserve, like, we're going to be getting around like 20, 25 rushing attempts a game, and in, I think last episode, we're averaging 15, like, we're just off the mark a little bit. But we got 30 inches here on our opening drive, and we're going to fire it in, oh, no! Why am I always throwing so many interceptions? Ah! Oh. Miles Jack jumped. Jumped that one, 39 yard pick six. Fuck sake, it's Jacksonville, it's gotta be a win, man. They don't even have like Jalen Ramsey, AJ Boye anymore. How are you throwing? Honestly, if I'm if I'm Jacksonville and I'm seeing that, I'm moving Miles Jack to wide receiver. Okay, Jimmy Collins with an injury. Cool, off ball, off play. That's a little worrisome, unless it's cramping. Dude, you kidding me? All pro. This is all pro. I'm getting absolutely worked on all pro. Is that DJ? I mean, you're not going to catch Chark. You give him heads up. There's, there's not too many people that can catch a 6'4", 95 speed wide out. How did that even happen in the first place? That's like a 90 some yard touchdown. That's not even check. That's D.D. Westbrook. Oh, man. What is going on? 
And better news, J.B. Collins' torn labrum will not be able to return for the game. I have no idea how long that's going to take, so awesome. Oh, get some. Oh, get some. Yes, you want you want your guy to run out the whole, you know, outrun my whole coverage? I'll get Kenny Galladay to outrun your whole coverage. Pulls one back. Thank God we needed that. Oh, Blake Cashman's hurt on that play. Awesome. Awesome. And then Blake Cashman coming out with a pulled grind. That's, oh, that's something that people love. A pulled grind. That's what I feel like I got right now for all these injuries in three minutes of gameplay. Oh, my God. This is the best play I've ever seen in a playbook. Whatever that play is, is always like... 30 plus yards or a touchdown. That's our money play. Who needs slants anymore when you have red zone halfback scissors? That's the best play in Madden 21. I'm telling you right now. Second and goal, untouched. Carry on Johnson. I think we found a weak spot. When you throw the ball, I mean, Miles Jack has already punished us, but I think that their run defense is horrific. And if we just continue to just feed 15, 20 touches. Carry on Johnson, 10, 15 touches, DeAndre Swift. We're going to be able to win. We're going to be able to kill this game off. And we're going to be able to leave Duval with a victory. Right, there we go. Second and six. Josh Sweat. I think Trey Flowers both getting home. Thank God. We had to just. We cannot. All right. If you, if you give up a lot of yards, Drew Brees, fine. You give a lot of yards, Aaron Rodgers, fine. Gardner Minshew. I like Minshew memes as much as anyone else. But we cannot let Gardner Minshew throw for 400 yards, four touchdowns against us. If we do, we need to just completely overhaul the secondary, fire sale, everyone not named Jeff Okuda. Oh, there we go, Hawk. What? Big old Hawk! Big Hawk with the big play! Third and three on the 21. Again, I, 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 li I like tight, like targeting our tight end. Ooh, oh, we should have done that. Let's go to Amendola. Get, get the first down with Amendola. He's a guy that's probably already got eight stages of CTE for playing slot wide receiver for this long. Even if it's a suicide pass, throw it to Amendola. He'll get you the first down. Second to five, we'll go to the air. I mean, I, I really do like Hawkinson. It, oh, no. It's a second. Oh, no. Uh? Carry on Johnson. That Jags run defense is horrific. Second and goal. Hawk. Hawk. Yes, DJ Hawkinson. Clearly wide receiver. I mean, not wide receiver, but clearly receiver two right now in this offense behind Galladay. As expected, maybe. I don't know. Maybe some people thought it would be Marvin Jones Jr., but the second year tight end out of Iowa. Very high ceiling. I think we're going to. Now he has a full season with Matt Stafford. Didn't have that as rookie season. I think we're really going to see the emergence of a top 10 tight end in the NFL. Again, no! These little dump-offs. Stop it! That's all they're using to get yards. Dude. Dude, this is unbelievable how bad our secondary is. D.D. Westbrook again. He's over 100-some yards. Excuse me? Are you... I think I just threw up my mouth a little bit. That's Chris Thompson. That was like Saquon Barkley, maybe. I just feel nauseous. It's time. They gotta come out. They gotta come out. There's just too much. It's too much. Mm, Slanchy, yes. 
Nice slants, cheese. Kenny Galladay, we need that. We absolutely need that. 49 yards, second touchdown of the game. We're going to break records today. Absolutely. It's going to be 800 passing yards. It's going to look like a big 12 shootout between Matt Stafford and Gardner Minshew. We've done a great job going down the field here. It's third and three. The run game has been really, really consistent for us. Hopefully it stays here. Oh, that's going to be close. Take the points. Kick the field goal. Take the points. Matt Prater's automatic. Collapse him. Collapse him. One-handed sack. Justin Coleman. He's way better at rushing the passer than he has been covering wide receivers this year. But that's a great stand from this defense. Definitely all the momentum going the way of the Detroit Lions right now. That man to two people. What a play through two people. Third and one on the 21, just outside the red zone here. I like Marvin Jones at the top of the screen. I also just like getting the first down. Get the first down, keep grinding this game. Because again, the Jags, they're only gonna they're not gonna beat us on a long, you know, sustained drive. It's only gonna be a quick play. So let's eliminate all potential of that and just kill the game off when we can power set i mean jags have not stopped the run all day I'd, i'll be very very shocked if they even reply any is it any resistance there's nothing there carry on johnson is in i think this one's as good as done we're not losing we're not losing to jackson they're tanking for trevor we're on completely different wavelengths of where we are at in going in this 2020 season Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, he dropped it. Let's go. He dropped. Oh, that's... Oh, he's gone. Get off to the race. I mean, okay, I guess he doesn't have, like, he's like 88 speed. But either way, over 100 yards for Swift. 200 yard rushers for the day for the Detroit Lions. They can't stop the run. Untouched. DeAndre Swift. Ooh, give me the pick. A lot of pressure there. Terrible. That's a throw we would make. That is 100% a throw we would make. Great interception. Justin Coleman got a sack already on the day. Gets his first pick of the season. And that there just shows the ceiling of type of performance that the Detroit Lions can provide. Even right now. Yeah, we're not. We're two and three. We we're probably not going to be, you know, Super Bowl champions this year. But stop at 48 points. We play a bad team. We can still handle ourselves against a bad team. Now, yes, Matt Stafford did have two turnovers. Interception, fumble loss. Yes, our defense gave up really, really bad explosive plays. But still, I mean, look at everything else. 27 to 33. Almost 400 yards passing. 81% completion percentage. Like, these are the kind of performances quarterbacks have been having against us. Knowing that Matt Stafford has that in his back pocket makes you feel good that once we can kind of get a handle on the interceptions, which will come, you know, I, I think I think Matt Stafford's our guy. I definitely have still 100% confidence in Stafford. Look at the running it. 53 rushing attempts. We got 144 yards, carry on Johnson, two touchdowns, 122 yards, and a touchdown for DeAndre Swift, who also led the team with seven catches, 89 yards. He might be the best rookie in the NFL today. Five or 50 for Amendola, three for th uh, 30 yards and a touchdown for Hawkinson. 150 and two for Kenny Galladay, who's looking to become, you know, in that conversation. You know, he's clearly right now probably the second tier, third tier wide receiver. He wants to be in the same breath as Michael Thomas. He wants to be in the same breath as DeAndre Hopkins and Julio Jones. And if he keeps playing like this, he's going to get there. Defensively, Coleman, sack, interception, great performance there. Uh, Josh Sweat had a sack and a half as well. Uh, obviously, the injuries, that's probably the biggest thing for the defensive side of the ball. Blake Cashman, Jamie Collins. We'll have to check that out on the break. But a big win for Detroit. We absolutely need this. So, following that week six victory, we got a couple things popping up. I want to see the injuries first. Obviously, two linebackers, two of our starting linebackers. Four weeks for Jamie Collins. Four weeks for Blake Cashman. So, we're, you know... We're going to have to just find a way to just keep on hanging on. Christian Jones can come in for Blake Cashman. We can get more snaps for Jared Davis. 
we have guys, but those are still really, really big losses to the defense. After that big week six, we have two players that have rightfully got some little upgrade points, upgrade tokens, whatever you want to call it, versus DeAndre Swift, who I'm firmly in belief, at least at this point in the season, is the best rookie in the NFL. And yes, that is including Joe Burrow and the like. And we have Kenny Galladay here, who's now up to an 88 overall. And if you were checking, your peepers are on the things to do as we get ready to go take on Julio Jones. And we're still just talking. He wants to get in that next tier, getting the breakout scenario for Kenny Galladay. Now we're going to need a ridiculous game. Atlanta does not have the best secondary. Let's be completely honest. You got big hitters for sure. We have probably their best corner from a year ago. Desmond Trufant is now on our team. Who do they have? They got AJ Terrell, who they kind of reached for in the first round of the 2020 draft. Um, like I said, Keanu Neal, is he, is he even playing? Like, what's what's the health? What has all those injuries done to deteriorate the talent there? They got great linebackers, sure. What else they got in the second? Strong safety, Keanu Neal, okay. Free safety, KZ, not worried about it. Denard, Kendall Sheffield, Isaiah. See, this is a secondary that we definitely can achieve those goals. I don't, do I want to force feed Kenny Galli? Do I want to expose ourselves, open ourselves up to even more interceptions? Or do we try our best to mitigate that and keep old Stafford right around? You know, we're, we're ahead now. At least we, we're better than even. 11 touchdowns is horrific, but at least 12 passing TDs, 14th in the league is a little bit better. But if we get focused on just force feeding Kenny Galladay, it's definitely gonna open ourselves up to throwing more interceptions. For the contracts here, still waiting on these guys. We definitely want to come back for Taylor Decker. He wants a little bit more salary. Something like that. 6.4. Hey, there we go. Got Taylor Decker locked up. Uh, Mike Ford. That's an interesting one at 25. I still think there's some outside there, but more so. We'll wait and see. We'll wait and see. We got an okay amount of salary. We can pretty much bring back anyone that we want. But I, I think getting Decker locked up was easily the biggest priority left there. Let's take a look at Atlanta. We looked at the roster, what they had for just secondary, but we got Julio Jones to worry about as an X Factor. So far, if you're a half good, half elite, don't have to be full of the way, but if you're half the way, you're, to you're torching our secondary. So I'm a little bit nervous about what Julio Jones and Matt Ryan were able to do, as Matt Ryan's also superstar ability. You got Grady Jarrett might give a little bit more oomph trying to stop our run. We might not be able to run wild with Carrion Johnson and DeAndre Swift like we did against Jacksonville. It, it's a tough game. It's definitely a step up in competition, but it's going to give us a good feel of, of you know, we, we look very good on both sides of the ball for the most part against Jacksonville. If we can do that against Atlanta, maybe we got something there this year. Or Atlanta's going to, you know, bring us back down to earth and humble us. It's going to be one of the two. Hopefully we can win and go to 503-3. and three. Got him. We got him. Yes, Kenny Galladay. We got that target, man. Superstar X Factor, our first X Factor on the squad. Let's start with 40 yards right there. Third and three, just outside the red zone. Not, not really worried about what they've been doing too, too much here. Ooh, let's just get the first down. Get the first down to go to... Come on, man. That's the only reason why you're team, because you get your hands. Fourth and three, kick the field goal. Third and seven. Come on, let's go. Just watch Julio. Just do not let 11 take this game over. How are we missing all these sacks? Thank you. Austin Bryant, the lowest rated starter on that D-line, gets the sack. Exceptional starting drive from this defense. Okay. All right, they got Hayden Hurst too. Cool. You overpaid for him from Baltimore. Mine. Oh, Jalen Reeves, baby. The depth linebacker, defensive player of the week a couple weeks ago, and he picks off Matt Ryan. Not going to get any easier than that. You know, third and seven here. We just cannot run the ball. Nothing there. Throw it away. Just don't get hit. Save yourself. Already, just, you can just tell it's a different tier defense we're going up against this week. Safety? Safety! Why? Oh, you're such an idiot, Matt Ryan. Austin Bryant, second sack, filling in for Jamie Collins. Let's go. All right, so I get a four just outside the red zone here. Nothing too crazy. Again, I, the last thing I'm going to do today. Oh, there we go. Marvin Jones Jr., great route. Last thing I'm going to do, even though it's tempting, incredibly tempting, is just to, like, every play, every play, let's let's go to Kenny Golly because that's how Matt Stafford's going to end up with three interceptions plus in this game. 
The second drop of the game for Kenny Gall. He knows that he can go up to X Factor, right? Does he know that? I don't think he's had a drop all year, and he got two already in the first quarter. Pressure is on. Second and goal. Let's go with the rookie. Give the Mr. DeAndre Swift. The run game has not been there. I think we have about ten rushing attempts, and we're under twenty yards between um, between Carryon Johnson and DeAndre Swift. So it might be a perfect game, though. Even though we're not going to force feed him, uh, we're going to have to win this with the Ironman match. Stafford, there we go. That's, I mean, again, it's the, we saw the corners. We did a scouting report. Kenny Galladay should absolutely abuse these corners. Come on. Come on, Kenny. Come on, Kenny Galladay. Oh, he's getting X Factor. He's getting X Factor, and he's going to rival Antonio Brown from Madden 20 Raiders as who's the best wide receiver in channel history. I think. I'm going to make that early, very early prediction. He's unstoppable. All right, let's, go. let's let the young buck finish this one off. DeAndre Swift, first and goal. A lot of traffic, a lot of garbage. Able to find his way through, but he's hurt on the play. No. No, he's holding his knee. He's holding his knee. Prayers up. Prayers up. Oh, he's in. Austin Bryant came into this game. He's a national champion winner with Clemson. Came in, no career sacks. Third sack of the half. Do we have a hidden gem monster on our D-line? Ooh, that was a brick hand. This might be the first game, now that we're back on All-Pro, that's maybe like, maybe All-Pro is going to be a little easy. But the fact that this is out of three games, there's been one that's like, yeah, it's a little unrealistic. I think that's pretty good. And uh, you still saw a little bit of the nonsense there. That was terrible hands. By Jazz, should have been a second pick of the game against Matt Ryan. Let's get a big stop here. Opening drive of the second half. Atlanta trying to do something. I mean, their O-line has absolutely failed them here today. Thought I could sub plays. Get out of here. Great PBU. 27. I don't even know who that is. But they're not letting Hayden Hurst have a day today. Great job. D. Here we go. More free yardage for Galladay. Getting ever closer to the 200-yard mark, which is our goal for that depth trade. What is it? 166? Still got pretty much the whole second half to play. Ooh, there we go. Big break. Oh, he's coming back. First time we get anything that's better than like two yards per carry. Carry on. I mean, nothing else has gone wrong this game, but it looks like it's coming back. Is that rag now? That better just not be Taylor Decker because we just gave him a big-ass contract. Would be very frustrating if he's just losing us and taking points off the board. It was rag now. He's been our best lineman. He gets a pass. Another third and long-ish on the 24. We, I just, I, you know, the gameplay might be a little more... It's only a matter of time to bit us in the ass. AJ Terrell, the rookie out of Clemson, jumps in because we're just, we got too comfortable. 22-0, all pro, feeling ourselves. Kenny Galladay's 20 yards away from an X-Factor. Knew it was going to happen. I knew it was going to happen. And there it goes. That pick. I mean, they get... If, all the momentum is on Atlanta right now. If we if we get a stop, we can hold no field goal, it, it, things might not be so bad. But the fact that they got a pick, they were doing nothing offensively, but post-interception, able to uh, potentially get a touchdown. I, I might be a little bit worried for the second half because all it's going to take is one or two of those explosive plays that we gave up against Jacksonville to someone like Julio Jones, who was fully capable of just destroying us on those kind of plays. And we're going to have one of the collapses and chokes of the season. So let's go. Get that stop here. Red Zone D. Our Red Zone D was phenomenal in Madden 20. There we go. Applying pressure. Why are they celebrating? You threw a pick. Stop it. And, like, the other one's ragdowns out there. It's like, oh, yeah, I just, you know, cost a touchdown. 20-some yard touchdown. Ah. Oh, Madden, 21. Third and goal. Let's get a stop here. Focus. Focus. Nah. Dodd Gurley. Third and 10. We just can't. We're just not. Okay, screw it, man. Let's go old school. We are not executing. When in doubt, converts till it hurts. Galladay beats his man. Just make this catch. X Factor. Unless they challenge that, which they might. 
think we just got him X Factor. Can we go quickly to the line of scrimmage? Snap this off with no laundry going on the field. And uh, worst case scenario, even if we find a way to choke this one away, we got our dude in X Factor. And we did. Beautiful. And there you go. There's full kudos to this Falcons run defense. I think we have 20 rushing attempts and we're we're not playing well. Absolutely not. Go to him again. Oh, he's a beast. Run defense is legit. I mean, Deion Jones is a beast. You got Grady Jarrett. That's a beast. Maybe we could hit him with something a little bit. Different. But absolutely, I already have like visions of it. I'm not throwing this. A field goal helps us a lot, way more than the improbable interception. If I try to keep it in the air, it doesn't matter. Terrible run defense on a on a team that's any other time they need to stop. It's just like that one when it's goal to go. That's back to back, just walk-ins. No one's even near social distance level of tackling from Atlanta. When 98% of the time in this game so far, they've been elite. It's been TFLs. I don't know why they're just collapsing on third down in the red zone, but it's working to our favor. Second touchdown for DeAndre Swift, best rookie in the NFL. But, oh, it's a good play, man. One thing we haven't heard, if I had to be honest, not a lot of Julio Jones. You know who's following Julio Jones? Jeff Okuda. So a very impressive performance so far from the first round pick out of Ohio State, but nothing to do there. Todd Gurley gets in for his second rushing touchdown of the game. Definitely feeling the loss of having some of those linebackers out for the next couple weeks. Third and 10, a little bit of a drive here from Atlanta. Oh no, how is it? Always oh, Hayden Hurst. Third and ten, I mean, there, there's no, you know, that is one of the biggest differences I notice from All Pro to All Madden is All Madden always kind of has that sense of urgency versus All Pro. The situational awareness is not quite there because it's just taking them far too long if they really want to have two full possessions without relying on the onside. Either way, we could end the game here right now. Fourth and seven. On Julio Jones, Jeff Oak. That's best play of the year. I know this this whole thing is going to get overshadowed by Kenny Galladay going to X-Factor. That is, without a doubt, play of the year for the Detroit. We don't even get one other replay. We get three replays of the sidelines of Matt Stafford and everyone celebrating a pick. But we only get one friggin' highlight of Jeff Okuda bodying Julio Jones on a jump ball in the end zone for an interception. i got to give him a little bit more credit than that. Let's look at this. Let's, let's, let's zoom in right here on the battle. There we go. Julio Jones. Many people regard him. Best wide receiver in the NFL. Jeff Okuda. Easily number one corner from last year's draft. And just, oh, let's get it. Come on, we run it up? Ah, we can't run it up. Game's over. There we, I, I mean, I don't know. I Honestly, I don't know where I'm at for, do we go back? Because we just it, it just feels weird, convenient. That our first full true episode on All Pro, we go 2-0. and And, I mean, there was still hiccups. Was not super easy. Barely won the first game. But, I, mm, I'll be looking at the college. You guys think it's more enjoyable for you guys as a viewer for me to be on All Madden or All Pro? You know, I want to be a man of the people. But you guys want to see. I feel like maybe give it another episode of All Pro. See, if we go 4-0 since flicking to All Pro, then we know that... There's some issues. We'll deal with all Madden. Maybe tweak all Madden, but keep it on all Madden. But let's not, that'll be the last of that talk. Let's highlight this victory. 29 to 15, over 400 yards for Matt Stafford. We came in with a goal to get Kenny Galladay, a superstar X Factor, and we achieved it. 400 some yards, classic Matt Stafford performance. This is as classic of a Detroit Lions performance during the Matt Stafford era as you're going to get, where Matt Stafford just slanging it in the same amount of time. The run game being... Essentially non-existent, very bipolar from a week ago at Jacksonville, only 31 yards on 17, 1.8 yards per carry. We did have the two touchdowns for Andre Swift, which is good, but even he did not have a particularly good game. But there you go. Megatron-esque performance. Kenny Galladay, 11 catches, 240 yards. Needed 200 to get the X-Factor. We got it. And one touchdown the day. Hawkinson had, everyone else 
had their roles. DeAndre Swift continues to be dynamic on the backfield. 4-51 and is probably the best game Marvin Jones Jr. has put up this year. And Hawkinson is just really reliable. Chain mover. Defensively. Insane. Austin Bryant. Like, practice squad guy. I don't even think he had, like, a single snap as a rookie for Detroit. Three sacks in his debut game. Definitely one to watch. And Akuda with the interception. Reeves Mabin with the interception. But that Akuda play. Pick on Julio Jones. Jump ball in the end zone. We're vibing, man. We are feeling very, very good about this victory as we finish this episode 3-3. Three and three. Let's see. Let's, let's just take this one in. Our first X Factor. And it, it, it's easily the guy that deserves the X Factor. And I don't know why I didn't have the X Factor X there. That's going to make me a little bit upset. But Kenny Galladay has done it. And I was, I was not shocked. If there's any player on this offense that I thought would go to X Factor and like quicker than anyone else, it is gone. Let's see what ability he has. It's grab and smash makes sense. Like I said, I was highlighting how much Kenny Galladay is such a violent yards after catch type guy. When they enter the zone, they've increased success on stiff arm and truck attempts following the catch. He has red zone. Now, let's be honest, in terms of X Factor, is that, it's not mossed and stuff. And, and what I've they've noticed from at least Madden 20 with our franchises and our X Factor, I'm not a great Madden player. I do not get my players in the X Factor a whole lot. But, I mean, what do we need to make? 10 plus yard receptions, but how many? Doesn't say how many, it's probably two, three, maybe up, no, there's no way it's more than three because that's not that overpowered ability. Either way, congratulations, Kenny Galladay, you deserve it. Let's wrap this one up. Next week, we got a home game against the Colts. And getting two road victories in this episode, that was huge. The week eight against the Colts, week nine against the Vikings. Vikings are gonna be a tough one. I think that Colts game, we're, we match up fairly well with the Colts for sure. Vikings probably, you know, that slight tier above where we're at. It's going to be a tough game. We have two weekly award winners. Kenny Galladay, 11 catches, 240 yards. Gets NFC Offensive Player of the Week and Defensive Player of the Week in his first NFL start. Austin Bryant, four tackles, three sacks. Again, can't read it right now. One to watch. We might have a diamond in the round. Here I thought we'd have to put Aqua. Is that... Why is someone pacing in Matt Patricia's office, and they're wearing full gear. Oh, Madden. Oh, Madden 21, you silly goose, you. Uh, hey, both of our players that did get the Player of the Week performances got skill points. We got Galladay with the morale boost. is now a 90 overall. I mean, where's he at statistically? Like, look at that pace. Staggering pace. 130. I mean, obviously, there's going to come a point in time that we might not... We might have a little bit of a quiet game, but my God, Kenny Galladay, the pace that he's setting, record-breaking, a record-breaking pace. Austin Bryant, three sacks in his first game. He's a run stuffer by trade, but you just let him pin his ears back. We saw what he could do against that Atlanta Falcons offensive line. What he could do to Matt Stafford. Matt, Matt Ryan, sorry. Matt Ryan's probably nightmares about Austin Bryant. You never thought you'd ever hear that, but it is. It's what we're doing. But we're 2-0. I think what we'll take out of this from our franchise is we'll give it one more full episode on all pro if it's like again if we if we smoke both the colts and the vikings we will definitely reevaluate where we're at and find the best difficulty to not only have good gameplay but to not you know obviously no who i don't think anyone wants to see me go on a deep playoff run year one with detroit i don't i pick detroit because i want the satisfaction of the grind and finally building them up into a legitimate playoff team so we will have another episode on All Pro, but we'll, we'll properly reevaluate. But I'm always going to be looking for you guys' feedback in the comments. But my God, Kenny Galladay. I mean, we got to be statistically Matt Ryan, number one in passing yards, just outside the top 10 in touchdowns. Really want to see. I'm not going to do a full stat breakdown, but I just kind of want to see Stafford, where he's at for yards. I mean, it's not really that much further than anyone else, but I guarantee Galladay, head and shoulders. Not even! Corlin Sutton's right there. That is insane. I guess we do have the bye. A lot of these other teams might not have their bye week yet. But Kenny Galladay, Mont John Ross. I mean, okay, it's, maybe it's not as overpowered as I thought. But when you look at that, 137 yards, and then everyone else is like in the nines and stuff. Kenny Galladay is truly. It would be awesome if we could find a way to break some of Megatron's. I don't even know if he, Megatron even has all the single season receiving record for Detroit. They had Urban Moore is really good too. 
But we're on to something special with Gala today. I'm excited to see how it continues. But that will do it for today's episode, guys. Thank you for watching. As always, if it's your first time stopping by, hit that subscribe button. We're trying to work our way to 150,000 subs. The sooner or later would make me very, very happy. Smash that like button. The likes help the video in the old YouTube algorithm. But more importantly, hit the like button if you're enjoying the content here in the Lions franchise and on Madden 21 on the channel. But that is for me today, guys. We'll be back tomorrow with something, maybe a rebuild, maybe something else. And until then, C4, say peace out.